Let's go ahead and look at an example of the relationships that we have uh, derived so far for computing uh, principal stresses and maximum shear stresses. And so suppose we're given the stress at some point in a body in as a that there's two normal stresses of 2 ksi in the x and the y directions and there's a shear stress of 3 ksi on the xy faces. So I've I've written that out here in two forms, in the matrix form and also drawn it pictorially. And the question then is to find the maximum st normal stresses, so the principal stresses in their directions, and the maximum shear stress and, and the, the relative orientation of the axes there. So we, we can go ahead and do this two ways. We can use our transformation laws. If I use the transformation laws, the principal angle, theta p, is one half the arc tangent of twice the shear, so that's going to be 6 ksi, divided by the difference uh, of the normal stresses. So it's one half the arc tangent of plus infinity. And the solution to that equation is pi over 2 and min or sorry, pi over 4 and minus pi over 4. And so we need to pick the one that's going to give us the maximum. Uh, so let me go ahead and just pick pi over 4 and evaluate. If I evaluate sigma x prime x prime, I get 5 ksi using the, the relationship that we had derived for the normal stress in the uh, principal frame. And if I evaluate sigma y prime y prime, I end up with minus 1 ksi. So we can see that pi over 4 actually gives us the principal angle because it gave us the maximum value. If I had picked pi, minus pi over 4 to do it, I would have found the reverse here. I would have found that sigma x prime x prime was minus 1 ksi and sigma y prime y prime was 5 ksi. So either way, we get the, the correct answer no matter which angle you pick uh, because if you evaluate both normal stresses or both principal stresses, you will find the maximal value here. Uh, if I go ahead and draw the picture for the uh, stress element in, in the principal orientation, uh, it's oriented at 45 degrees, and there's 5 ksi in the 45 degree direction, and there's a compressive stress of 1 ksi in the orthogonal direction. So I've gone ahead and drawn the arrows in the compressive sense, and I've written 1 ksi here and not minus 1 ksi. So that's just a pictorial representation of the principal stresses that one can compute from this state of stress over here. Now this is one method of doing the calculation. The other method of doing the calculation is to uh, do the eigenvalues and so I can take the determinant of sigma minus lambda identity, set that equal to 0, and if I go ahead and do that for the values given, I end up with this quadratic polynomial, lambda squared minus 4 lambda minus 5, and that needs to equal 0, so I can use the quadratic formula, and I can solve for sigma 1 and sigma 2, and if I go ahead and do that, I get the exact same answer that I had before. I get 5 and minus 1, and the units here are KSI, so I haven't changed any of the units along the way. Now, to get the principal angles is a little bit trickier here, so it's nicer if you have a calculator that does this, but you can also do it by hand. If you want to get the principal directions, uh, first you can solve for the eigenvectors. So we take the eigenvalue, we plug it in up here for lambda, and so we get our matrix multiplied by n needs to be equal to 0, so n is the eigenvector. And now I have to solve this equation here for n, and because I have an eigenvalue there on this homogeneous system of equations, I it is possible to get a non-trivial solution for nx and ny. Obviously, nx and y equals 0 gives me a solution, but that's not of any utility. I can go If I go ahead and look at that, you'll notice that this first term here is minus 3, so I have minus 3, 3, so one solution is to pick n is equal to 1, 1. And we usually normalize these to be of unit length, so 1 over square root of 2, 1 over square root of 2. To get the other direction, I can use the other eigenvalue, which is minus 1. So if I plug that in, I'll get 2 plus 1 and 2 plus 1. And if I want to find a non-trivial n that satisfies this, I could pick, for example, minus 1, 1. And again, normalizing it, I get minus 1 over root 2 and 1 over root 2 here for the components. And so if I draw the picture there, you'll see that those two vectors are oriented at 45 degrees with respect to the original two vectors. So there was x and y, and here's my x prime, y prime in the principal frame. So drawing the vectors, one can then figure out 
what theta p is, that namely that it's uh, 45 degrees.